Hi, Year One. Let's get started with today's English lesson with a bit of a vocab blast. So we're going to do it a little bit differently today. I have got all of the words that we have been learning in the past couple of weeks down the left hand side. So just here, look, and I've written them for you to see. I've also got some pictures in the middle and I've also put a description or a definition for each of these words down the side as well. What I would like you to do today is just spend a few minutes. First of all, make sure you can read these words. Then I want you to match the picture to the word and then match the definition to the picture to the word. So for example, the first word is calm. Which picture do you think it is calm? I'm not going to show you which one it is, but for example, you might think it's this one. So you put this one next to it. And then if you think this is the definition, so that would go with it as well. OK, don't worry if you haven't got this at home and you can't print it out. You can just say the word, point to the picture and point to the definition so that you can show me which ones you know. So pause the video now and just have a little go at matching those keywords up with the pictures and their definitions for me. Great, right, I have got them all for you here to have a little check, okay, and see how well you've done at home. So this first word here was calm. This is the picture for calm and Calm is when you're feeling relaxed, okay? So the opposite of being stressed is calm. Can you remember what type of word calm was? You remember, was it a verb? Was it a noun? You're right, it was an adjective. So the next word we had here was glum. And here is a picture of the man being feeling glum. And if you are glum, it means you are miserable or sad. Okay, and can you remember the word glum, which word type it is? Well done if you said that was an adjective as well. Here we've got the word underneath. We've got a lovely little picture of a kitten underneath. I think it looks like um, a sofa. And the definition of underneath means that you are positioned directly under another object. Okay, and underneath the word type is a preposition. And then my last word is burst. Here I've got a packet of rice, which is burst open. And when you're bursting, it means that a substance is coming out of something else, okay? So now our brains are fully awoken for today's lesson. I want us to have a little look at these events that we started to order yesterday. So we finished the story now, and yesterday's task was to talk through the events and pop them in the right order and use those time adverbials to tell us when things have happened as well. So spend a couple of seconds just having a look. Which order do the pictures come in? Have a think. Hmm. OK, if you need a bit more time, just pause it. So I can remember, I'm going to order it now on the screen, that first the man wanted to reach the star up in the sky. He saw that the birds had flown up to the sky to try and get to places. So he decided he was going to ask his factory workers to build lots of to build lots of rockets and different parts of the rocket so that he could try up there himself. And then here he is in his rocket, which he later had. And then he traveled up into space to get to the star. When he got there, he wasn't very happy with what he found. Meanwhile, the dinosaurs were woken up from their sleep beneath the earth because it was too hot from all the smoke and pollution that the factories had made. So the dinosaurs came out, they were disgusted by what they saw, and they destroyed everything that the man had done, such as they were destroying the factories, they were breaking up the roads, they were putting the rubbish in the volcanoes, and so on. And then finally, at the end of the story, the world started growing back, everything was beautiful, the prettiest colours of the plants grew back, and all the animals were rejoicing, and they told the man that it was everybody's responsibility to look after the planet, okay? And they were talking about it not just being the man's earth, but that the earth belongs to everybody. 
okay? So hopefully you remembered all that yesterday. So for the rest of this week, we're going to have a little bit of a different focus. We're going to move on to our longer written task now, and we're nearing the end of this story, unfortunately. So eventually we're going to be creating a little leaflet for the man to read and this will tell him how to look after the earth because I'm not sure about you but I don't think that he did a very good job about making sure that the earth was clean and was beautiful and that things could grow so for example on our leaflet we might be telling him how to make sure that we reduce the amount of waste we use or how we can plant different trees um, and how we can reuse objects to help keep our earth safe and beautiful. And when we're writing our leaflet, we're going to use um, some verbs which have this suffix ing on the end of them, okay? And we've looked at suffixes before, and if you can remember, suffixes come at the end of our words, okay? But today, instead of using one we've previously looked at, we're going to be looking at using ing on the end of a word. And this means that we're changing the verb to the progressive tense. Let me explain what that means. So here on your screen, you can see some pictures. In this picture here, we've got a man with some celery. So hold your celery and get your knife and chop it up. So right now, what is it that you are doing? So you are chopping, okay? So that is the progressive present tense. So it's what you're doing right now, chopping. Okay, here in this picture, I've got a child who looks very glum, very sad, very miserable. What are they doing right now? So hopefully you've said that they are crying. Okay, so they are crying. Here in the middle, we've got a little girl. She's got her spade. What's she doing with that spade right now? Ah, she's digging. Okay, so that's what she's doing in the progressive tense. Here I've got a young gentleman, a man, and what's he doing with his microphone? Get your microphones out. He is singing. And this last one here, we've got a man, he's getting his bricks, and he is building. Okay, so they're all things that they, these people are doing now in the progressive present tense. We have looked at different verbs, and we have looked at different suffixes as well. So here we've looked at the word walked, and walked at the end has the suffix ed. Can you remember if we add the suffix ed onto the end of a word, what happens to that word? Does that mean we're doing it now? Correct, it doesn't. It means it's already happened. It's something that is in the past. So these verbs, when we add the suffix ed onto the end, they are in the past tense, okay? So walk is my root verb. I've added ed onto the end and that makes it the past. Similar with this word here in the middle, I've got plant, plant as my root word. Then I've added ed suffix on the end. So the whole word is planted and it's something that has already happened. This word here, I've got j -up, jump as my root word. I've added ed suffix on the end, so the word becomes jumped. Here I've got p -a -t paint as my root word. I've got an ed suffix at the end to change it into the past tense. And the last one I've got b burn as my root word. And I've got my ed suffix at the end to change it into the past tense. So thinking about where the suffixes come, just a reminder, do our suffixes come at the beginning or at the middle or at the end of my word? Well done if you said the end, okay? So our suffix today, we're going to continue. So we've already done ed before, and now we're going to look at an ing suffix, which comes at the end of my word. But before we do anything with these words, we need to know a little spelling rule. Okay, so if there is a short vowel before the last letter, then we need to double the letter before we add the suffix. So these are our vowels, and I'll explain what I mean in a second. So we've got A, E, I, O, and U. Can you have a go at saying those? 
So we've got A, E, I, O, and U. And what sounds do they make? Let's check. We've got A, E, I, O, U. Fabulous. So when we have these short vowels before another letter, then we have to double the next letter before we add the suffix. Let's have a little explore of these so I can show you exactly what I mean. So let's have a go at these words and we're going to change them into the progressive tense. And that means that the verb is telling us that something is still happening right now. So we're going to make sure we're adding the suffix ing onto the end. Can you help me read this first word at home? So I'm going to stamp it out with my sound buttons and I want you to have a go too. So we've got the word hop, hop. Okay, so my root verb is hop. Now, hop has an O in the middle of it, okay? And it makes an O sound. Therefore, before I add ing onto the end of it, I need to double my P. So I need to put another P here, and then I need to add I-N-G. Okay, so I'm writing the word hopping. Let's check this one here. I've got sk, it, skip. Hmm. Where is my short vowel there? Ah, here it is. Skip. It's got the I in it. Therefore, I need to repeat that last letter, which is a P, and then I need to add my suffix I, N, G, and then the word becomes skipping. Have a little think about these two words that are on the side where I've just done the arrow. Pause this video, have a little think. What do I need to do to these two words to make them into the progressive tense with the suffix ing on the end? Have a little chat about this at home. Okay, hopefully you pause the video there and had a little think, but I'm going to go through it now. So here we've got the word put, put. Let's have a look. Where is my short vowel? Here it is. It's the letter U. Therefore, I need to double the last letter, which is a T this time. So I need to put another T and then the suffix I N G. Okay, and let's check this one. So we've got get, et, get. Hmm, where's my short vowel this time? Ah, here it is. It's an E. I wasn't sure I could check here because at the top, I've got my vowels that I've written for you. So we need to double that last letter, T, and then add the suffix, I, N, G, onto the end, and I've got the word getting. Well done. So now I've got two words at the bottom. Okay, let's have a go at sounding them out. So I've got d, r, op, drop. And I've also got this verb here, which is a tricky spelling, but let's see if we can have a go at doing it because we have looked at it before. B, I, l, d, build. Hmm. Do both these words need the last letter doubling? Have a little think. Do both these words need the last letter doubling? Let's check by looking at the word drop first. So does drop have a short vowel before the last letter? So the last letter is P and then before it, it has the letter O. Is that a short vowel? Let me check. Yes, it is. Therefore, I need to double my P and then I need to add an I, an N and a G. OK, so I've changed that to the word dropping. Here, though, my other word, which was build, where is the last letter? So my last letter is D and then the letter before that was L. Is L a short vowel? Let me check. A E I O U. Hmm, no, it's not. So, do I need to double the letter D? No, I don't. So, this time I just add an I, an N, and then a G. Well done. Right, let's have a go at putting this into practice a little bit more now. And I've chosen some words 
which we might need to use in our information text. And we might need to change them to the progressive tense with the suffix ing on the end of it. So I've got these words, which you should be able to see. I've got d, r, op, drop, p, l, a, n, t, plant. I've got b, er, n, burn. And I've got l, look, look. I think I'm going to choose the word look. So that's the one I'm going to do first. I'm going to write look on my lines, look, look. And then I want us to think, what does look change to? So we're making it change into the progressive tense. So I'm going to look at my words. The last letter is a K and the letter before that is an O. Is an O a vowel? Let me think. My vowels were A, E, I, O, U. Ah, so it is. However, there is another O before it, and together they make an U sound. Therefore, this is a tricky one, and we write looking like this. So we just add the suffix onto the end of it. Okay? As here we've got a double vowel. So if we have a double vowel, it makes a short vowel sound, then we only add the ing onto the end of it. So we've done look. What about plant yes look at plants i'm going to write plant now okay so the word plant so plant has a t at the end and the letter before that is an n hmm is an n a short vowel let me check a e i o u no it's not so at the end of this word all i need to do then is add the suffix i n g so i'm going to write plant just like this right let's do another one let's choose this one so this word is burn hmm burn let's have a look so i've got b, uh, n, burn the last letter is an n and the letter before it is an r is r a vowel let me check a e i o u no it's not so therefore, we just need to add the suffix ing onto the end. Burn, ing, fabulous. And I've got one more, which is drop, drop. So the end of drop, I've got a P. The letter before it is an O. Is that a vowel? Yes, it is. What do I need to do if it is a short vowel? I need to double that last letter. So I've written drop, I need to write an extra P. And then I need to add my suffix I-N-G, okay? So make sure that you are reading the root word, check the last letter, is there a vowel before it? If there is, then you need to double that last letter. If there isn't, then you don't, and you need to add the suffix ing. So just here, look, I've had to double it and then add the suffix, whereas here, I do not because N is not a vowel, I just add the suffix ing. So your little task that I want you to have a go at doing today is similar to this. And I've got lots of words that I want you to write down and then change to the progressive present tense and put the suffix ing onto the end. So I've just put those words up on the screen for you now. So there's quite a few of them. And I would love it if you could do most of them. But if you could just make sure you do the top line, that would be perfect. But I've given you a challenge and given you some on the bottom as well. Have a little think. If it's got an E on the end of it, what might we need to do to add the suffix ing onto the end? So write these words down. And then add the suffix ing, just like I've had a go at doing here. So changing them to the progressive tense. So write the root word, add the suffix ing. What is the progressive tense verb that we get? Have a little go with it and let me know how you get on. And then keep this to the side because we're going to need to use it when we are writing our leaflets to give to the man about how to make sure that the earth is not destroyed ever again. Okay, see you later for phonics. Bye.